So you think you got troubles tomorrow morning at 1030. Well, that's probably because she's picking up your bad habit of not getting dressed very fast. I was ready in time tonight. Oh, it's because your mind was not on the mirror, that's why. Well, you're right. I don't think of this as a party. I just have this awful feeling of doom. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any problem, at least not till tomorrow, if Jody manages to get in front of that television camera. She is being so mysterious about it, not telling us her exact plan. If we knew the exact plan, it would be very easy to thwart, wouldn't it? You're right. I'm sure that's what she's thinking, too. Do you know what I'm still thinking? So that's Chad, who's helping her. I may be wrong, nothing else makes any sense to me. He's the one who brought her here, he knows very well about her resemblance to the woman in the portrait, probably knows all about her ancestry. Well, I wish Jody didn't. <laughs> These are programs. What? Tomorrow's events? Yeah. Oh, yes, look at this. A jousting tournament. Simulated sword battle. Oh, no, another parade. Mm, it sounds like fun, doesn't it? You see this one? Tomorrow at 3. A live telecast by satellite back to Eden. The speeches by Ambassador Groves and Chad Southern. <gasps> Jody. Miles, that is not the dress she brought with her. I know it is. I hemmed it myself. What dress that is? Look, it's the one in the portrait. Hi, how are you? Marie Bonaventure. See what I see? Too clearly, my friend. If there was any doubt what this young lady intended to do before, this doubt is over. Edge of Night is brought to you by Pampers. America's mothers trust their babies to Pampers dryness. And by Bowl 3, detergent plus full strength fabric softener. Not long ago, my only exercise was climbing up and down a stepladder. Today, I'm climbing Eagle Mountain. Boy, have I changed my life for the better. Back then, antique stores were the only place I knew to buy antiques. Now I know what to look for. I get my best buys at yard sales. That's some change. And before I knew better, I had to buy boxes of this and bottles of that to get my laundry clean and soft. But Bold 3 Detergent Plus Fabric Softener changed that. Uh-huh. A product that cleans, softens, and controls static cling all in one box. Now that's a change for the better. Oh, I know. Only if it works. Well, Bold 3 works. Look at these jeans. Muddy, right? These were just as muddy. Would you ask more from a detergent? And talk about softness. I mean, this feels really soft. Now watch. No sticking, no crackling, no annoying static cling. Would you ask more from your fabric softener? Now that's some change. A change for the better. Bold three. Pampers presents Babes in Toyland. 16 Mattel toys to make your baby happy. Up to $50 in savings to make you happy. Buy these Mattel favorites. See and say. Tough stuff. First wheels and more. Get up to $50 in rebates. Just buy Pampers and save Teddy Bear points. Look for the Pampers display in your local store or the ad in Sunday's paper. Let Pampers put your babe in Toyland and save up to $50. Well, don't you worry. I'll uh, get rid of that mean old headache for you. I'll bring you some aspirin and massage your temples. And like it or not, I am on my way. Calvin, please. Look, I really do feel rotten. And if you came over right now, I would probably just cry on your shoulder. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. I mean, what else are shoulders for? Or I might even do worse. I might try and pick a fight with you, and God knows we've had enough fights already. Oh, no, the wars are all behind us, Didi. We're on the same side now. I will see you in 20 minutes. Bye. Hey, Calvin. What was that? 
I said my voice is back, and so am I, so you better be ready. Well, well, does the chief know about this? I don't know, but Captain Anderson does, and that's all that counts. It means I'll be getting paid. All right. Still chasing those greenbacks, huh? Well, that, but uh, I also figured you needed a partner, what with Loomis being dead. Yeah, don't remind me. And it was a shock to me, too. But it proves the point that we were both talking about, and that is that Loomis was not very careful with firearms. Yeah. You know, I always thought his carelessness would end up being a hazard to other people. I mean, I figured Loomis for a real survivor. Yeah. Calvin, is it true that Dee Dee's kid brother shot Loomis? Yep, it's true, all right, although... for the life of me, I can't figure out what happened. Well, did you find out what went on in the drama studio? All I know is Troy was there, Loomis was there. The, the strange thing is that the gun was fired twice. Anyway, Loomis is dead, Troy's taken on the lamb, and Dee Dee's, well... You can imagine how Dee is. I'm on my way over there now. Well, don't let me stop you. You just go right ahead. Yeah, look, uh, by the way, you had a phone call. Oh, really? Who was it? Um, from my car. Yeah, what did he want? Well, he didn't leave a message. Just said that, uh, you ought to call him. Okay. Thanks. See you in the morning. Uh, Calvin. Yep. Good luck with Dee This is Damien Tyler. Damien, you've obviously got your voice back. How do you feel? Well, I feel pretty good. Uh, my throat's a little bit sore, but it's strong enough to talk. Well, I'm glad you recovered so well. I wonder if you're well enough uh, for some conversation. Oh, sure. What's it all about? There's something I'd like to talk to you about, Damien. Uh, something that relates to your father. I just decided that the dress did not look right, and that's why I'm wearing this one. You thought it looked fine at home. Well, uh, it looked different in this setting, and then Chad told me that he had this wonderful dress, so... Oh, I, I just... I see. There's just... This dress in your size was hanging in the closet upstairs. Huh? No, Doctor, no, that's not quite how it happened. Actually, I had the dress made up some time ago. Yeah, and it's her dress, isn't it? Marie Bonaventure's the martyr of Eden. Yes. At least it's the dress in the portrait. I made a sketch of it and gave it to a dressmaker. But this was made for my portrait originally. See, Chad thought that it would be interesting to have the same dress. You didn't pose in that dress. I changed my mind. I didn't think it was right to just uh, duplicate the one in the portrait. No, it wouldn't have been right. Any more than it's right for Jody to try to duplicate what her ancestor might have done. Anyway, when Chad showed me this dress, I tried it on and I simply loved it. Don't you like it? No, I don't like it. It scares me to see you wearing that Jody, dress. Jody, just see the reaction you got when you walked in here. I don't see what's wrong with it, Doctor. I mean, after all, this party is in celebration of uh, Eden's history, and the martyr is a very important part of that history. This is not a masquerade party. Jody doesn't have to masquerade. She's the real thing. Are you telling me the people in this room react to the martyr being the same way you do? I know she was a great heroine, but don't they shudder when they think about her now? Because of the prophecy? Yes, because of the prophecy. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I would love some champagne. I'll get you some. Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. Would you stop staring at me like that? Jody, I can't help but seeing you in that dress. Tell me something, Jody. You plan to wear that dress tomorrow for the telecast? What? You know what I'm talking about. There's going to be a telecast live by satellite to Eden at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Now, you're going to be here, aren't you? I... I guess I will be, because Chad is going to be saying a few words. It's expected of him since his father is the president. What's expected of you, Jody? Miles, please. That is when you're going to make your move, isn't it, Jody? It is so obvious what you and Chad have planned. He has nothing to do with this. Oh, Jody, don't start lying to us now. Miles, please, I asked you not to spoil this party for me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am going to find Chad. <sighs> you! Good evening, Miss Travis. What are you doing here? I was invited, Miss Travis. You know, I used to work for Mr. Endicott and his daughter for a long time. Yes, but at the time, I didn't know they worked for the Republic of Eden. That's where they are now. I guess they'll have to watch the big party on TV. Yes. Excuse me. Nice to see you again. By the way, that's a nice dress you're wearing. Cheating your children. Cheating? You're not using a complete toothpaste. What's complete, Grandma? 
Triple protection aquafresh. All the cavity fighting fluoride of the leading paste. All the breath freshener of the leading gel. And gentle cleaners that even remove stained films. Concentrated in one complete toothpaste. Would I cheat my kid? Never. <laughs> Triple protection aquafresh. A complete toothpaste. Morning, sir. Hmm. Good afternoon. At Sargento, we're very persnickety. Before a cheese can become a Sargento cheese, it's put to our aroma test, crumble test, and our ultimate test, taste. Good. Hmm. But not good enough. We know what to look for in cheese, so all you have to look for is Sargento. Afternoon. Evening. The Persnickety Cheese People from Plymouth, Wisconsin. Here you go, Damien. Thank you, Mike. So, you're really back on the job. Yeah, I felt that Calvin needed a partner after what happened. I'm sure you've both heard about that. Mm, yes, I did a story on it for the paper. I'm, I'm sorry. Was he a good friend? Oh, he certainly wasn't a good friend. Well, he, he was a fellow police officer. Look, Mike, about my father. Now, this call, uh, was this concerning this guy Foley, who's been pretending to be a government agent? Yes, it was. I know that Derek told you about him. Actually, Derek told me that you did most of the detective work, Nancy. Well, I called our Washington News Bureau uh, once I became suspicious. And the suspicion was confirmed. Foley is not an agent of the counter-espionage agency. And the guy hasn't been caught yet. No, he hasn't. So we're still in the dark about what he wanted or why he was asking so many questions about Jefferson Brown. And about your father. Well, I'm sure you both know how I've responded to this. It's been quite a while since I gave up trying to clear my father's name. Yes, we realize that. It must have seemed like a terrible task once Jefferson Brown died. Yes, it has. But if this Foley knows anything, I'd like to be able to speak to him. Well, we don't know whether he does or doesn't. But now, someone else has entered the picture. Who's that? A man named Cameron. Cameron? David Cameron? That's his name. Do you know him? No, I don't know him personally, but he was the man who investigated my father. He was in charge of security affairs when the documents disappeared. Yes, he told us about that. Uh, he said that he was the man responsible for clearing Jefferson Brown. Yeah, he certainly was. And I have to say that I have not been full of admiration for the man since that time. Well, he's uh, no longer a security officer. He's been promoted since you knew. Oh, great reward for incompetency. Look, I'm sorry, that's just the way I feel. Well, he's now the number two man for the CEA. And apparently he feels that this matter is that serious that he's dealing with it personally. Well, I think that's too bad. They should have put somebody else in charge. That man has a very closed mind. I think it's been reopened, Damien. <laughs> I sincerely wish I could believe that. Damien, he doesn't feel very good about what happened. I don't imagine he would since my father killed himself. Damien, I think you and Cameron ought to get together, despite the way you feel about him. Would you be willing to do that? Sarge, you're using the wrong machine to soften your clothes. Smith, I am putting the liquid in the washer like you're supposed to. You should use Bounce in the dryer. My clothes are soft. Try Bounce. Soft? Well, my things don't cling, usually. Bounce gets out clean better, because it works in the dryer where static starts. Well, this smells nice. Not like this. It's fresh. And they smell fresh longer, because Bounce's freshers don't get rinsed away. No liquid or sheet has that terrific scent. Sarge, you've been using the wrong machine long enough. And the wrong softener. Smith! You softening me up. With Bounce. Mm. Bounce, the right softener for the right machine. My mom always says... A penny saved is a penny earned. Right. So I save pennies with this bargain liquid. A bargain is no bargain if it doesn't do the job. So I'll use more. Waste not, want not. Dawn handles more grease for the money. Are you sure? Am I your mother? Look, I've washed a sink full of greasy dishes in this average bargain liquid and Dawn. Now watch. I'll dip two clean plates. The bargain plate looks greasy. Not Dawn. Dawn stands up to grease, keeps it away from dishes. Dawn does handle more grease for the money. 
Dishes look great. Even my hands don't feel greasy. They'd look even better with a wedding ring. Next time, call. Dawn, handle more grease for your money. Hmm. <sighs> Thought for a minute you weren't going to open it. Calvin, I really don't want any company. I told you that. I know how you feel, Dee Here. You hear your aspirin? Thank you. Look, don't you think it would be better to just talk about it with somebody who cares? Calvin, do you really expect me to believe that, that you're as worried about Troy as I am? After all, Didi, he is your brother. Calvin, that's not enough. I can't expect you to love him because I love him. I can't expect you to forgive Troy because I want you to. He killed a cop. One of yours. You've got to hate him. Maybe. If he was someone other than who he is. Didi, I love you. And anybody and anything that's yours and that you love has to mean something to me. Oh, oh Calvin. Calvin, what would I do without you? You know, I was hoping all day that you would call me. <laughs> and I knew that I would ask you not to come over. But I was praying that you wouldn't listen. Oh. oh. Dee Dee, I think about you so much. You know, sometimes I think that I could deal with anything that happened on the streets during the day just just if i knew i had you to come home to at night and what would you do about the night shift <laughs> <laughs> well it probably wouldn't matter since uh when i think about you i can't tell day from night anyway Would you stay with me tonight? I'm not going anywhere else. I love you too. You know that, don't you? You always knew that. You always knew that. Well, I must admit, it has taken you a long time to coming around to say. That's because, that's because it hurts so much to say it. Well, that was before. And this, this is now. <laughs> Why, it's ironic that now should come on a night like tonight, isn't it? Mm -hmm. While you hold me, we talk about my brother. My brother, the fugitive. Well, look, let's, um, let's not talk about Troy, at least not just yet. Let's just be together, huh? That's all I think I'm entitled to know. Didi, who's that? It's Mitzi. Now, where did you say you were again? No, Where's it's that? not Didi. What? It's Troy. It's Kelly. I heard it. It. Hello, hello. You know, you shouldn't have done that. You should have let me talk to him. Why? So you could trace the call? Didi, I would just have tried to talk some sense to him. That's all. Well, do you think you could talk any better to him than his own sister? 
What were you going to say to him, Calvin, huh? What were you going to do? Try to threaten him? I was just going to try to make him understand, that's all. Oh. Calvin, tell me something. Is that why you came over here tonight? Because you thought Troy might try to get in touch with me? What? Well, if you want him so badly, why aren't you out there with the rest of the cops? Why aren't you out there with the bloodhounds chasing after you? you are seeing this thing all wrong. Oh, no, I know why you... Well, you were so willing to spend the night with me. Because you thought Troy, Troy might come over here. He would get in touch with me. And then you could bring him in. You could be a big hero. You'd get a commendation and maybe even a Damn medal. Damn it, Judy, stop it! Oh, stop it! And you just get out! Get out! If you knew the crazy thoughts I've been having, trying to think of some way to stop Jody from doing this thing. Like what? Oh, I don't know, like... like talking to Mr. Rinaldo. Maybe if we told him what Jody was planning, he'd call off the whole telecast completely. No, 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 I don't think he's gonna do that. It'd be much easier just to keep her away from the cameras. Well, I thought of that, too. Maybe we could. What are you suggesting? What are you suggesting? We kidnap her ourselves? Yes, look, that's not too no, far-fetched an idea. She's over 18. We can't do anything to physically stop her from doing something she feels so strongly about. All we can do is advise her and try to keep her safe. Otherwise, she's going to resent us for the rest of her life. Well, else, this is impossible. There is no answer. We are damned if we do and damned if we don't. Chad, they know. I mean, they, they, they're positive that you are the one that's helping me, and they've known that you've encouraged me to do this. Well, I knew I couldn't keep it from them forever, Jody. The important thing is that nobody else finds out. What about tomorrow? After 3 o'clock, after I make my announcement. What are you going to do then? I'll go home to help my country, my father. Your father is going to really need your help. I know. He's going to be the first one to suffer if there is some sort of revolutionary action taken in Eden. I think he's suffering more right now, though. Oh, Chad, I'm scared. I'm scared for both of us. We'll be all right. Look, Nicole and Miles made a very good point, and it's, it's very true. What's that? That we are here all alone. We're surrounded by people that are enemies. Or at least they will be by tomorrow. And would you care for some canapés? No, oh, thank thanks. you. What about some champagne? Uh, better known as giggle water. Cliff! Mitzi, what? what is this? What are you two doing here? Uh, we're, we're working, of course. What's it look like? You look like a nice cream man. <laughs> Have some champagne. Uh, how did you guys get in here? Oh, don't ask me. I, this was all Cliff's <laughs> idea. You see, he was upset because Gavin was upset that you were coming up here with... With me? Well, you must admit, since you appeared, uh, Jody's life has been interesting. Gavin was afraid that you might be uh, kidnapped or worse. So Cliff said, let's call these turkeys and see if they're hiring any more waiters and waitresses, and they were. <laughs> see, Jody, you're not so all alone well, after I all. Well, I can't believe you guys have done this. Come on, tell me all about it. How well, did you, how did you it was really stop? simple. I saw this in a movie once. These people dressed up like waiters, and they went to this party, and they were really spies. And uh, it worked out well in the movie, so I thought maybe it'll work out here, just to make it Cup women, haven't you heard about the thank goodness it fits bra from Playtex? It's different. Not a big bra cut down to size, but a bra with an exclusive fitting system for A's and nearly B's alone. The newest one even comes in lace. The newest, prettiest thank goodness it fits bra oh. from Playtex. Oh. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank, thank goodness. goodness. Thank goodness it fits. Hello, I'm Orville Redenbacher. I've always sealed my gourmet popping corn in jars for freshness. But great taste takes more than jars. It takes great corn. I've spent over 30 years perfecting my special hybrid kernels to pop lighter and fluffier than others. So my gourmet popping corn won't taste stale or chewy. Mmm, each tender kernel melts in your mouth. Jars are important, but for great taste, it's the corn that counts. And there's only one Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> General Hospital. They're on the run at Mystery Mountain, and Luke comes closer to the dangerous truth. You're trying to get away. Is that what you did when you left the carousel? Give me some answers, Holly. General Hospital. 
Well, of course, I didn't tell him I was a lawyer. I didn't want them to think I was overqualified. And, of course, my qualifications were perfect. I mean, practically the only job I've ever had is waiting on tables. Come to think of it, it is the only job I've ever had. Are you sure you'll still have it when you get back, Mitzi? Seems like you take an awful lot of days off. No, no, I was glad I was going. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Mitzi, did you tell Sid you were coming here? This is supposed to be a secret. Why? Well, it just sort of slipped out. Well, I don't know why it has to be a secret anyway. Uh, let's all drink to, um, Cliff and the Mitz. The Mitz. <laughs> here, here. Or, let's all drink to anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is pretty good. I understand why Gavin was upset. He thought you were going to walk into a snake pit or something. Do these people look dangerous? Oh, Jody, you never know. I mean, there may be some more of those terrorist guys running around waiting to drop a bomb or something. Well, I don't think we have anything to worry about. All the people were screened before they came here. Jody, we got in here. There's a point Jody. there. Cliff! <laughs> See, I don't believe it. Well, how'd you recognize us? I think it was the earring, Cliff. How'd you two crash the party? Well, it's a long story, but it really wasn't that hard. We were just worried about Jody being here alone. Well, I personally am glad to see two more friendly faces. So am I. The more the merrier. Are you sure you're not upset with us, Jody? What? I mean, we didn't come here to spy on you. I hope you know that. Jody, are you all right? Yeah, I'm just, um, feeling a little hot, that's all. I was thinking it was cold. Again. Jody, is that champagne? Oh, she never could handle that. Uh, look, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go put some water on my face. I, I hope you don't upset that we're here. I, Gavin seemed to think there was some kind of danger. I don't even think you have to worry about that, Cliff. Uh, she's my date, and I can take care of her. We knew you two were here, but, uh, well, five heads are better than one, right? <laughs> As the old proverb says. <laughs> so you two do oh, but of course, you're No, no, yes. I give you a few prize. It's all right. <laughs> Jody's lucky to have such good friends. Yes, she is. But there may be some friends that she has who are not so lucky for. You all right, Miss Travis? Yes, I'm just, uh, just a little dizzy. I, I think it's the champagne. Yeah, it's tricky. You gotta be careful. <sighs> yeah, just gotta be careful. Hey, Gerald, since you're the class S champ, I'm picking you to pick the champion chip. Ruffles brand or regular chips? First these. Kind of regular, guys. Now, Ruffles. Tremendous potato taste. Ruffles win. In a national test, moms preferred Ruffles by an average of almost two to one over leading regular potato chips. Look, uh, you don't have to be a champ to know which chip is champ, so judge for yourself. <laughs> Ruffles, the championship. Judge for yourself. <laughs> Just when you thought you were alone in the shower, there's mildew. <coughs> but mildew doesn't stand a chance, because now there's new Easy Off Instant Mildew Stain Remover. Its thick clinging formula concentrates power where it counts. Mildew munches gobble up mildew stain so you don't have to do a lot of scrubbing. And when they're done, your bathroom smells clean. New Easy Off Mildew Stain Remover has the power to devour mildew stains. Friday, watch Miss Piggy in her first variety special, The Fantastic Miss Piggy Show. Sunday, a night of stars and spectacular entertainment. John Forsyth and Marlo Thomas host the Emmy Awards. Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, crime victims are organizing. I feel angry that nobody seems to be doing anything. How great a voice should victims have in our judicial system? Do they want justice or just revenge? ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. When your margarine won't cling to your corn... Give it a little squeeze. No ordinary margarine goes so easy on your corn as Easy Squeeze Parquet. This is Stormfield. Coming up on the 5 o'clock Eyewitness News, a wild police chase in Westchester County. It ended in a deadly crash on the New England Thruway. We'll have details. Gloria Rojas is also going to report on victims of yesterday's DC-10 crash that are returning home. And Vince Lapari tells us about a dog with a special talent. And there's a big controversy because officials Ten, won't give the dog nine, a special license. Eight, take flash. And we'll tell you why the deadly game is being played by Interior Secretary James Watt. We'll have that and much more for you at 5. Join us. Coke is it! Coke is it! You're working out with all your might. You do it big, you do it right. Now your thirst is as grand as your big marching band. And you got 